up block starts tonight. We're gonna try something new with this group. We're gonna be doing some med ball heaves, like a forward med ball heave, and then straight away into the blocks to see if we can kind of get that horizontal projection from the medicine ball toss into the block start. And then we have four fast runs after that, 150, 120, 100, and an 80 with not quite full rest, and then a bunch of general strength stuff at the end. So that'll be two hours. <laughs> How are you feeling after Saturday? Better, I can like jog now. Okay, one step at a time. Just keep building and Saturday was step one and we'll just keep building off that. A little bit, it's a little tiny bit more every day though, not like jumping into the deep end straight away. For sure, I don't yeah. want to injure it. Nope. Get your knees a little further apart on that one. Both sides. Uh, I'm Zach, uh, I do the 400 and I uh, just got drafted to the Bears. Down and back on the field, three times please. If you're onto the down and backs, just make sure each one's a little tiny bit faster than the last. I think that looks good. You can take it out to that cone and uh, jog back. Straight leg bounds, yes, absolutely. Kind of recreating that motion of the foot underneath the hip and making sure that the hips are in a good position, glutes are pushing forward, and that they're also maintaining some good um, upper body torso. So generally what happens is if there's any weakness in the core, they'll lean way back, so the shoulders will be kind of in a position like this. So we try to use it as an opportunity to cue up like kind of good upright, um, upright torso position for that's more like they're upright sprinting. I'm not as concerned with that for our Excel. That's why we do the sprint bound before Excels. Um, but later on, it's just a nice cue to have to relate back to when we're doing our upright sprinting. So take the three Excels to get into it. Go ahead, Will. Take the three Excels to get into it. Oh, here we go. And again, and again. Six? Aspire? We definitely haven't done it as a group. So this is gonna be new for whoever wants to be the Demo person, Jimmy. It's looking like you. Okay, so we're gonna yeah, <laughs> golf club. Uh, we're gonna do something very hyper specific. We're gonna try to isolate kind of that idea of the hips coming forward when you're accelerating, coming out of the blocks. So we're gonna do that by doing a, a medicine ball heave, a, a front facing forward heave, and then immediately doing uh, an acceleration to see if you can kind of like replicate that motion of the uh, hips going forward. So we'll do a few with a low crouching start, and then we're gonna do it again in the blocks, and we're gonna see how that goes. My experience so far doing this with some of the um, older athletes has been like super positive, and uh, part of this is for you to develop kind of that feel of um, using your hips to go forward. So, arms straight, roll and throw up. Okay? Okay, so you're gonna wanna start the throw a little bit sooner, this way, and then immediately, oh, oh, I should not have done that. <laughs> So yeah, that's good to get that out of the way. Anybody able to feel a difference once they got to their Excel? You felt powerful? Yeah, that's excellent. That's kind of the point. We're gonna do it with what matters. We're gonna do it with the blocks. You're only gonna take your blocks out to 10 meters. So same idea, set your blocks up first, do your medicine ball heave, take your time getting into the blocks and then see if you can recreate that idea of the hips moving forward coming out of the blocks. So yeah, set your blocks up, grab a ball and then let's, uh, let's do it to it. Jonah, yeah, I got you. Throw it over my head. Watch out, Mathis. Oh, okay. We're trying to project ourselves out of the blocks in this direction, horizontally. So this is a good way to apply force horizontally for a long time. And this is one way of trying to isolate that, trying to get them to do a good job of it with the medicine ball and then put it in the bigger picture. We'll see. Yeah. So let's try to bring that aggression into the ball throw and then also the, um, the Excel. Um, Will, you're up here? Okay. That's actually probably the best she's looked. I think this is clicking for her. Flat back, shoulders forward. Set. Okay, next group, set them up. Set. Fifty, one twenty, one hundred and eighty, and you have four to five minutes rest in between those. We cool with that? Let's think about accelerating like you were doing here, and then finding a nice high, tall posture 
coming down the home stretch. The wind's gonna be at your back, so nice time to feel nice and tall, quick rhythm, making sure that you're in control and your back foot leaves the ground. Get it up in front of you. If you wanna run, if you're having some trouble, you're thinking about too much, maybe you run on your own. If you wanna run with a group, I'm cool with that too. The acceleration's really hard, especially for those taller guys, because they're still growing. So some of them are like 16, 17, they're in the middle or at the end of a growth spurt, so their body awareness isn't great. So in a weird way, it's less about what they're doing here and kind of growing into their body. And I find my biggest thing for blocks is making it make sense for them where they are. But over the course of the year, and like some of these kids I've known for five or six years, so they have a pretty good understanding of like what, what it is they're meant to be doing. Stay plugged in, finish it, go back, try again. And over the course of doing that a bunch of times, it's gonna click, but you gotta start by uh, laying up. Can you give me one more? Yeah. I'm not so worried about the 80 with you, but I, I would like the one more run. Push, stand up, stand up. The idea, uh, if I'm saying push, it's always during their excel. It's kind of like when they're accelerating, I'm, think, I'm asking them to like push, push down and back. That's why I'm saying push. Yeah, no, no, it's funny. Yeah, the other side of that is like that very generic like push. Okay, one more. What's something you're gonna work on on this one? Everyone's gotta give me something. Okay, arms, especially at the end. Listen to them, quick cadence. Owen, what's going on? What's the last one? 80, 80 meters. You just did that? Okay, flat's on and we'll meet at the hill over there. Okay, we are going to head to that um, little hill over there. Do some tiny little exercises and that'll be that. I see these guys for the most part just three times and that's by design. In grade 11, if I've known them for a few years, I might ask them to come in a fourth day or give them something to do on their own. If they're at that age where it's still important to be doing other sports, so a lot of them are playing soccer, basketball, volleyball, hockey, these sorts of things, and that's really good. Um, just make sure they're not overtraining and not getting too burnt out. Uh, but a normal week, these guys go Thursday, pardon me, Monday, Thursday, Saturday. So recently it's been short speed on Monday, and that's partly because there are some local competitions on Thursday, so I want to make sure that we're not uh, interfering with that too much, and they're still able to be fresh for that. Thursday we'll have maybe like a strength, explosive power, mobility, and then some long tempo, and then Saturday is lactic capacity, anaerobic, lactic work, and then we'll roll that for three or four weeks, and then maybe take an off week, or maybe we'll break, or maybe test, and then shake it up. So usually try to roll month-long cycles, um, and that's a good way for them to kind of be exposed to a training tool have a few chances to go through the same workout and try different, try things differently. Like I think even after today, most of these guys and girls would leave and say, oh, if I had just done this one part differently. So it's good to give them a little bit of um, a chance to do like do it again. And then after four of them, they kind of feel like good, good ownership of it and they, they can do a really good job of it. So that's important too. So yeah, that's, that's what it's been looking like recently. And then once we get into our competition season, it'll probably be um, like one short speed day, a competition day. And then they need, a lot of them are competing in like a ton of events. So they'll do like 100, 200, 400, four by one, four by four with their school. So that's like, I can't ask them to come back a day after that and have a good training session. So the Saturday that we see them after that might just be focused more on like regeneration or recovery or these sorts of things. And then the Monday we can maybe address something that they wanted to change from the meet and then get right back into it. So it's, a, it's an interesting time of the year for high school kids because once they start competing, it's like, well, those competition days are like super, super heavy duty. They're doing a lot, it's really fast. So I've got to respect that and make sure that I'm not burning them out. Okay, so I have like a bit of a monster circuit here. We've got some backwards slow walks. Jimmy's, Jimmy and Owen are doing those. Get your butt down, boys. So a little bit of tension in the quads. Then they have to do inchworm push-ups back down. And that's just total death because their heels, their feet are above their, their arms and their shoulders. So it's putting a little bit more, um, more stress on their, uh, uh, kind of their chest and shoulders and triceps, just making the push up a little bit harder. And then they turn around and do um, ankle hops up. So we're just wor worried about, uh, or working on, I should say, like dorsiflexion, foot preparation, getting your feet ready for the ground. And then of course, some, some springs, having some pop off the ground. And then the A run after is on a day like today when it's a little cold, it's nice to keep moving. So. Focusing on that posture again, hip strength. Toes up girls, toes up. Tight ankles here, get your feet ready for the ground. And again, I try to keep the cues kind of relative to uh, the stuff that we were doing earlier so that they're able to draw the uh, connection between the two. 